uh, not least from distance, Roman Abramovich. And of yeah. course, uh, Burnley, Simon, at the weekend playing Chelsea. Uh, and of course, pre-match, there were applause for the Ukraine people yep. and the plight that they find themselves faced yep. with. Uh, and then we heard some Abramovich's chants thereafter Thomas Tuchel addressed the situation. fans to to commit to this to this minute of, of applause in the moment we do it for Ukraine and there is no there is no second opinion about about uh, about the situation there and that that they have our our thoughts and our support and we should stand together as a club it's not the moment for other messages very definitely not the moment Simon was it mm. for, for yeah, other no, messages so some of these Chelsea fans chose to chant Abramovich's name yep. uh, during the applause for the people of Ukraine. Simon, I mean, where does this go? Now Abramovich is, uh, is saying he's out there and yep. the club's up Running for, for sales. Yep. £3 billion, pound, the asking price, it would seem. Is that a fair valuation, incidentally? Um, it depends if you're the person purchasing it and you value it that. Um, there's no parallel universe where it's worth three billion quid. Look at the money that it's losing. Look at the money that these clubs are losing. People have to look behind the scenes of why people buy these football clubs. It's all well and good. Listen, I've got no problem with Roman Abramovich. I met him years ago uh, uh, when I was at Palace. He was in my boardroom a couple of times. I was in his. I met him at Newcastle's boardroom. He speaks English, not the greatest, and he's a perfectly pleasant guy. But Abramovich is leading, leaving a vacuum that will be filled by somebody. It'll be filled by somebody because if he is indeed... I mean, the laughable statement, you know, I was in Spain and I saw it, the laughable statement about stewardship. I mean, come on, who's going to put Bruce Buck in charge? Who's going to be the same people running the football club? And then the narrative ramped up and, of course, the pressures are bringing down and he wants to run away from this situation. The irony of it is, is the very thing that he bought to give himself a public domain representation to probably give him one of the most expensive life insurance policies is the very thing he needs to get away from now, which is public profile when Chelsea Football Club and all it's brought. Now, he's talked about, you know, obviously donating the net proceeds. Well, if he's not calling his loans back in, the whole proceeds are going to be net, aren't they? Besides mm. stamp duty and agents' fees and God knows whoever else is going to get their hands in the till to try and profit from this particular situation. But I don't see Chelsea being on the end of a demise. I see the next ownership model coming in and looking at how they can get a football club economically and what they can do with it. The tragedy for me is... And it's not because I was an owner once upon a time that was an English owner didn't have enough money. People were attributing last week the, av the evolution of the Premier League to people like Roman Abramovich. With due respect, with the exception of Chelsea, Roman Abramovich was one of the worst things that could have happened to English football. We were on a direction of travel that was already upwards. Our Premier League was already flying. We already had the broadcasters throwing money at us hand over fist. What you did was you created hyperinflation. You might have broken up the duopoly. You might have stopped the, the powerhouses that were United and, Man and Arsenal for a period of time, but that was going to happen anyway because mm. ownership models were changing. What you did was you changed the landscape by, by making football so financially unviable for your own reasons. People look at these people buying football clubs like Manchester City, like Newcastle, like Chelsea, and look at the ownership. These people aren't buying these football clubs because they love the football clubs. They're buying them because they want to get a life insurance policy against political leanings, against they want to sports wash, they want to legit legitimise regimes like Newcastle. They want to have a situation where they own our English football clubs and we sit there and we go, that's great. And the main beneficiaries of it are agents and players. And what have we got now? A generation of players that have no character, no backbone, no substance, get paid far too much money. The immorality of football comes up for question. And I think it's a tragedy. I think it's a reality. And the lack of governance behind the game gives it people like this the, the, the facility to be able to do this. Abramovich's legacy is what? For Chelsea, fabulous. For football in this country, I think it's awful. I think the oligarchs owning our football clubs, Usmanov as well, is awful. We're all getting virtue signalling about Russian money. It isn't just Russian money that's dirty money in this country. It's across the board. And tragically, our biggest, most aspirational assets are our football club. And we're quite happy to welcome these people in to own our football clubs as long as they've got a big bag of money. That's so right. I sat on the sideline, sort of storing this up <clears> last <throat> week, thinking... Mm. Was it people? Oh, the Premier League has been brought forward. All this crap I've been listening to. If it wasn't for Abraham Roman Abramovich, the Premier League would never be what it is. Nonsense. We had the best players in the world coming already. Ronaldo was already at Man United. Juan Sebastian Veron at the time, who was perceived to be the best player, was already in England. So These players so, were already coming. I mean, even though Abramovich took Chelsea and English football to a different level... No, he took Chelsea. What you're saying is... He took Chelsea. It didn't need to be taken to a different level, well, English so football. What's happened 
is that people are saying that the commercial powerhouse that the Premier League has become is because of Roman Abramovich's money. Three tiers of, of, of change in the Premier League. Sky becoming involved and really starting it. Roman Abramovich and then Sheikh Mansour. And next you'll see these ghastly regime that are running Newcastle take it to the next level with more controls aren't in place. But what did it do? What it did was it created hyperinflation which has destroyed football. The championship is in an absolute chaos. The EFL cannot keep up with the Premier League. The only beneficiaries have really been players and agents. No one's making more money. No one's getting anything more out of the game. The fans are seeing sometimes better football, but they would have seen it anyway because he's play our powerhouse league would have superseded La Liga, would have superseded Serie A. It didn't need this kind of money to do it. And what it's done is it's brought about a vacuum in our game. Look at the way players behave now. Look at the money these players are getting paid. Look at the immorality of all of that. And you look at it and say, what did it actually bring? The game's getting further away from the fans. The cost implications of the game are getting greater. Players are getting more control and less value. We're talking about Man United players. Don't get the reality of playing for, idea, ironically, the most mm. iconic football club mm. in the world. And part of that is the financial landscape that was created by people like Roman Abramovich. Good riddance, bye-bye next. Is and there, hopefully a regime that actually wants to be involved I was just with the well-being say, of football, did, not did, just did Chelsea. Did his arrival mean the beginning of the end for people like you? Well, well people... And, you know, I'm thinking of John Hall, who you and I know and love up and, in Newcastle. And you can make the argument... Who really loved the club. True. Like Jack and you, Walker at Blackburn. And you can make the argument that people like Jack... Well, hang on, it wasn't Roman Abramovich, it was Jack Walker. You tell me Jack Walker didn't buy Blackburn Rovers because he loved Blackburn Rovers. Mm. You tell me that he didn't want to build Blackburn <clears> Rovers into a football club that re that reflected the values of the community, of his belief in Blackburn. Now look at Roman Bramovich's ownership. Look at Mansur's ownership. Look at what's going to happen at Newcastle. Look at other ownership models that are in this. In, and it's, that's not because they love Moss Side or because they love the King's Road. It's because they have a reason for chucking this kind of ridiculous money. In, look at Ma Manchester City. Last year, and the Man City fans are going to go mad now because I'm making it about them. The Manchester City group, for the last three years, has lost 350 million quid. That's what their losses are. That's not about the sustainability of football. That's not about football as a, as a 92 club um, uh, football pyramid in this country. What have we got? And, we're, and people are lamenting the loss of Roman Abramovich. Mm -hmm. They're lamenting the loss of these kind of owners. I mean, for me, and, and, you're, and to answer your question, does it bring about the end of people like me? Well, people will say, oh, because you didn't have enough money to compete. Well, that may well be true. Yeah. But the, 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 the idea that football has become all about money and all about influence, soft influence, nation states but owning football clubs, regimes legitimising themselves, oligarchs, oligarchs trying to find themselves away from political landscape, it's bloody awful. And our football our football has been leveraged for that. So would you say, would you say for Chelsea fans now, going back to them specifically... There is reason for optimism that there might be a new ownership model that creates a, a different yeah. feeling and a different. Or, or would you be get, would you be fearful? Get, not unless you're going to get some governance in place. That not only was it an awful thing, and I understand what happens because we've got this idea that meritocracy is based on how much money you can pay somebody, right? And the idea was that you should invest, and you got people like Keir Jurapson saying it should be an open market to be able to invest. But there is a point where if you're destroying everything else around you, and the only thing that's really benefiting are a very small group of people, what does that symbolise? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. does that actually involve? Yeah. Yeah. To me, Simon, the tragedy is we know as much about Abramovich today as, as we did when he came in day one. Oh, we know what. In other words, <laughs> not a lot, yeah, because take, he never opened his mouth. Taking that aside, Jim, in spite of a trying Jim, if you look at, if you, if you look at, just from a footballing perspective, from my point of view, there was one thing that Chelsea did get right over the last, what, 18 years or whatever it is? Yep. Appointments in high positions of, of CEOs, of managers, of uh, recruitment officers, you know, the, the, all of that. Because they kept they kept winning trophies, and it seemed like every time they made a decision, where you go, "Ooh, not sure about that." Why have they got rid of him? It seems to work. Now, my my concern for the moving forward is if the new owners come in and completely change the people in the leadership roles, the those DC. If you look at Manchester United, money's not really been an object. They've still tried to spend and compete, but they're nowhere near. So, is is it going to be a case of who comes in? We obviously we don't know who. But United haven't gone for best in class. United, I mean, it is United they think is they laughable. They think I mean, they it are. is embarrassing. I haven't got a witch hunt against Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. The antidote to Guardiola and the antidote to Klopp was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah, but I'm on about the recruitment. Board, but the boardroom, okay, the boardroom makes his appointment. John Murtis in there. I mean, are you telling me these guys are best in class? No. So, so if Chelsea continue with the best-in-class mentality, whoever that may be, they'll continue to be okay. 
right? They're, they're trying to build perhaps now because there's more governance and more teeth in the governance that they're trying to build a sustainable football club. Yeah. And if mm. you look at the way that Man City and Chelsea are running their accounts, they know that they've got they're staying just inside financial fair play. Yeah, just enough. We will invest a load in our academies because academy costs are offsetable against against losses. Yeah. So they know what they're doing here. But the bottom line is, is that I don't see Chelsea suddenly diminishing. I'm keen to know. I'm no, keen I to get I your thoughts, know. Simon. That when the new owner comes in. Does, if, he, does he does if, he keep if, gra- does if, he keep Granite Sky? If a new owner does he com- keep but if a new owner comes in, Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Thursday morning ten till one on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker Talksport.